Good morning, everyone, and I hope you are well. Thank you for joining us on a special day. Yes, it is a special day. It's Mother's Day, so I hope you've managed to make your mom feel special already. One of the things I am going to ask you to do is if you don't mind listening to Reverend Zolly's sermon if you haven't done already. What he does is halfway through his sermon, he'll share a time of Holy Communion. This will give you and your family a perfect opportunity to spend Holy Communion together. What a blessing to have Holy Communion on Mother's Day. Yes, this does mean that you guys get to listen to two sermons, but I hope you are blessed within them both. But before we begin with our youth message, let us open up in a time of prayer. I'd like you to close your eyes as I pray. Father God, thank you so much that you give us this moment right now to be able to set everything else aside. All our worries, our fears, our concerns, that we're able to draw alongside you and that we're able to put you back into the focus of our minds. Lord, I pray that you'll use this time for us to be encouraged and to stand firm in the knowledge that you truly are our refuge. Lord, I pray that as we begin to understand and believe in who you are and what you've done for us, that we will then become your witnesses, true lights into a dark world. I pray that you'll use this time so that we become changed people. I pray this in your name, Father God. Amen. One of the words that I used within our prayer this morning is the word refuge or shelter in a place. During this time of COVID-19, I can't help but see that we truly are trying to build our own refuge. We're armed with masks every day and sanitizing wherever we can. We're raising the drawbridges and fortifying our homes. The buzzwords that we're using right now is social distancing or flattening the curve. Right now we are being reminded that to live on earth is like truly living in a war zone at this time. This pandemic is really making it clear that society truly is really struggling with this idea of trying to make a refuge. And yet today in our scriptures, each and every single one of them I could have read this morning, we are reminded that Christ is our one and only refuge. I'd like to encourage each of you to read read these scriptures during the week because each of them are an encouragement. If you were to read the Psalms reading, it will encourage you and show you that God is our refuge from danger. The Acts reading is a beautiful reading where it reminds us of Stephen, the first martyr who takes refuge in a glorious vision of heaven even while he's been stoned to death. If you were to read the Peter reading that we have this morning, we as the readers are urged to take refuge in the restraint of being God's people. But today I'd like to focus on the Gospel of John. We'll be reading John 14 verses 1 to 14, and you'll hear Jesus offering a heavenly shelter for his disciples a refuge for those who have troubled hearts. Let us hear the word of God today. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, 
Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Thank you so much, Charles. So I know a lot of you guys have been speaking about the fact that data has become an issue. So we are going to try and squeeze our youth messages into 20 minutes from now on. But this does mean that we're barely scratching the surface of the true message for each Sunday. Please engage with us afterwards on the WhatsApp group. Drop a question, drop your thoughts. We want to dig deeper into the scripture with you. So please engage with us after every message on a Sunday. With that being said, there are three points that I'd like to look at this morning. The first is I want to know or look at where was Jesus when he was saying what he was saying? The second is what was he saying to his disciples? Is there a deeper meaning to what he was sharing this morning? And the third and most important, I believe, is why do we need to know this? Why do we need to know the context? And why do we need to know if there's even a deeper meaning to the scriptures that we've read this morning? So let us look at the first point, is where was Jesus when he said what he was saying? What is the context? You guys know that I love looking at the context of scripture. I believe that it is deeply important to understand what happened before and what happens after the scriptures we read. So today, if you look at chapter 13, you will see that it's actually a scripture that we read during the time of Easter building up to Good Friday, where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. He then predicts his portrayal, and then he moves on to predicting that Peter will deny him three times. Then we get our encouragement scripture this morning, and straight after the words of encouragement we read this morning, you will see that chapter 14 continues with Jesus promising the disciples a comforter, somebody that is going to come and stand alongside them, the Holy Spirit. So that is our context of our scriptures this morning. The second point is, is there a deeper meaning to our scriptures this morning? I know that most of you have attended a funeral before and you might have even heard these words being recited at a funeral. They're often used to encourage those that have lost a loved one. Can I tell you today that these are not funeral words, but they're actually painting a picture of a wedding. Yes, you might be saying that that is strange rocks, this is not a wedding scripture, but I can tell you today it is. In my culture, for me and Charles, it was quite easy for us to get married. Charles only had to ask my dad if he could have my hand in marriage and once he had overcome that hurdle, things seemed great and we just needed to wait in a time of engagement. But that is not the same for Jewish culture or much like our African cultures here in South Africa. What happens in a Jewish culture is there are far more steps to actually go through before one could actually be married to his wife. What would happen in a Jewish culture is that the husband or the husband-to-be would declare that he would want to be married to a young lady. And once he had declared that, he would have to go back to his father's house to prepare the bridal room. Can you see that that's ringing true in our scriptures this morning? Is Jesus says to his disciples, I am going to my father's house to prepare a room for you. There are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you this? I'm going to prepare this room for you so that you may be where I am. So why is Jesus sharing wedding pictures with his disciples? And within the context, what is going on in the scripture? I can tell you that something deep is happening to this scripture this morning. Our context shows us that sandwiched between a message of pain, betrayal and denial, there is a love so deep and great. Jesus shares that beautiful image of a wedding to show how deeply he loves his disciples. That sandwich between that he encourages his disciples. I want you to think of maybe Peter. We know who Peter is. Peter we read in the context, context that just before what we've read this morning, he's told that he's going to deny Jesus three times. 
He must have been deeply hurt, cut deep to the heart. But within that message saying, you're going to let me down, Peter, Jesus is able to say, but I love you. If you think of Thomas, we have the privilege of knowing Thomas has a problem with doubt. But we can even begin to see that doubt this morning in our scriptures, where Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. He's struggling to believe. And in that pain of Jesus knowing a friend of his that he spent so much time with, struggles to believe Jesus, he's still able to share with Thomas a great love. Well, think of Philip. Philip says, show us, show us and then we'll understand. And Jesus says, but haven't you been with me? Haven't you seen? I am who I say I am. In that denial, that pain, that a friend does not see Jesus for who he is. Jesus is still able to say, but look at this great love I have for you. Today's scriptures, I believe, are powerful. It's a time that we're able to be reminded of God's love. And because of us being reminded of his love, we can be settled in that refuge, being comforted in the peace of God. A peace of believing that God loves us so much through his son, Jesus Christ. I don't know if you noticed, but the word believe appears six times in our scriptures today. Today we were asked to be enveloped in God's love. And because of that, it draws us to believe in him. And the outcome of that is that we're able to hold on to the peace, which is our refuge, the peace of God through the thick of our everyday battles. A peace that is able to look at sickness, able to look at COVID-19, even to look at death and ultimately, ultimately know that Jesus has conquered it all through his death and resurrection. Why? Because he loves us so much. May we be sheltered in the refuge of God's love and peace so that we can proclaim to the belief we have in him that he truly and indeed is Jesus the way the truth and the life he is the only thing that we can hold on to even in our times of struggle let this be our encouragement this morning COVID-19 yes it is our storm but despite the building storm we find peace in God's love